Hello everyone. So today we'll be learning about basic logarithms. And the first thing we need to know about a basic logarithm is the definition of a logarithm. So let's have a look at that now. Here we have your basic index form, which is a to the power of x equals to y. And how do we change that into logarithm form? Well, over here we have your basic logarithm form, which is x equals to log base a y. And this is a really important change that we all have to remember. And a little trick that I use to remember this is that with your basic index form, what we're actually trying to work out is what the index equals. So in this case, that's your x. So if we're trying to work that out, then when we change it into your logarithm form, that's why we have x equals to, or the index equals to the logarithm. And also, if you have a look at your index form, the base of the index is a. And also, in the logarithm, the base of the logarithm is also a. And then lastly, we have your y equals two, and that just goes over here. So for me, that's a really good way to remember it. So just remember, the base of the index also becomes the base of the logarithm. And when we're trying to work out where the index is, so that's why we have the index equals the logarithm. And just one little note before we go on. Whenever you have the index in the logarithm, it must always be bigger than zero. So just to remember that for the questions that we work through later. Okay, so let's go through an example now. Let's have a look at example one. Here we have the index 2 to the power of 3 equals to 8. And now we need to change that into logarithm form. So let's just go through what we've been explaining. So we're trying to work out in the index what the index equals. So therefore, we put that over here. So we have 3 equals to the logarithm. And the base of the index, in this case, is 2. And that also becomes the base of the logarithm. And then finally, we just move 8 over here. So to change from the index to logarithm form, you should have 3 equals to log base 2, 8. OK, let's do a question now. So question 1, we need to write a log statement equivalent to each of these index statements. Let's look at part A. So in part A, we have 125 equals to 5 to the power of 3. Let's change that into logarithm form. So let's do what we've been explaining. So the index in this case is 3. So therefore, in the logarithm form, we have 3 equals to the logarithm. Now, what's the base in this case? It's 5. The, and that 5 also becomes a base of the logarithm. And finally, we move 125 over here. So you should get, when changing from index to logarithm form, 3 equals to log base 5, 125. All right, let's have a look at another question. Here we have 6 to the power of minus 1 equals to 1 on 6. So you can see that it looks a little bit different. We're working with fractions now. But the principles of it should still be the same. So once again, we have the index over here and that moves over here because we're trying to work out where the index is. Now we look at the base of the index and that's 6. So we know that that has to be the base of the logarithm. And finally we have 1 on 6 and that moves over here. Okay, alright let's have a look at one more example. So here in part C we have 0.0 0, 1 equals 10 to the power of minus 3. And changing that into logarithm form, what's going to go here? Yep, exactly. It's going to be your index over here. So that moves over here. And then once again, we think, all right, well, 10 is a base of the index over there. So 10 must also be the base of the logarithm. And finally, we move 0 0.001 over here. So Finally, you should get the format of minus 3 equals to log base 10, 0 0.001. Okay, let's move on now. So, in the previous questions, we were moving from the index form to the logarithm form. In example 2, we're going to be learning how to change from the logarithm form to the index form. Alright, so what we have here is 
2 equals to log base 5, 25. And that's your logarithm form. And here we want to change it into the index form. So we'll just be going backwards from what we were doing before. So once again, what we want to do is have a look here. Well, 5 is going to be the log base of the logarithm. So 5 is going to be the base of your index as well. And remember how we said that in your index, what we're trying to work out is the actual index itself. So that's why we have the index equals to the logarithm. So we, therefore we know that 2 over here should be the index over there. And then finally we just move 25 over here. So changing it from the log to the index form, we should have 5 to the power of 2 equals to 25. Okay, let's do a question now. So in question 2, we want to write the following statements in index form. So the first one, we have 5 equals to log base 2, 32. Alright, so we think 2 is a base here, so it should also be the base in the index form. Well, what's going to be the index? It's going to be whatever equals the logarithm, because that's what we're trying to work out. So the 5 goes up here, and then finally we move the 32 over here, so we get 2 to the power of 5 equals to 32. Okay, so let's look at another example to reiterate what I'm saying. And also, questions like this often come up in exams where we don't use numbers but we actually use letters like B, C and A. Don't get confused by that, we're still using the examples that we're talking about. So let's have a look here. We want to see what the base of the logarithm is, which is b in this case. So the base of the logarithm becomes the base of the index. And then remember how we're saying the logarithm equals the, what the index is going to be? So therefore a over here becomes the index. And finally c moves over here. So once again we have the base of the logarithm to the power of a, which you can see here, equals to c. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So in part C, we have log base square root 5, 25 equals to 4. So that may look a bit complicated, but we're still using the same principles where we have a look at this logarithm form and we go, all right, well, square root 5, that's the base of the logarithm. So that's going to be the base of our index form as well. And since that logarithm equals to 4, we know that that 4 must be the index in our index form. And then finally, we just move 25 over here, and we've changed from the logarithm form to the index form, which should be square root 5, the base, to the index 4 equals to 25. All right, let's have a look at this example now. So, so far we've changed from logarithm to index and index to logarithm form. Now we're going to learn how to solve equations using these methods that we've just learnt. So in example 3 we want to solve log base x equals to 2. So how are we going to do that? How we do that is we have to first of all change from the logarithm form into the index form. Okay, so before you solve any equation, we want to change from that logarithm form into the index form. So we know how to do that now because we know that the base of the log is also the base of the indice. And we know that the, what the log equals, so log 10x equals to 2, that becomes the index here. And then finally, this x moves over here. So we know now that x equals to 10 to the power of 2. So that's not our final answer, just remember that. If we solve, we, were going to, we have to solve it completely. So we keep going and we know then that x equals to 100. So the important things to know for this is that to solve this, we must first change from the log to the index form and then solve it completely. All right, let's do a question now. So question three is similar to the example. Here we want to solve log base 2x equals to 5. So remember what we said before, we want to change it from the log format into the index format. Okay, so we have a look here and we go, alright, well 2 is the base of the logarithm form, so it's going to be the base of my index form. And since the log equals to 5 here, I know this is going to be the index. 
And finally, we have x over here moved over there. So now we have x equals 2 to the power of 5. And remember, that's not the final answer for all our solving questions. We must also solve completely. So the answer should be 2 to the power of 5, which equals to 32. So in your exams, you would go, therefore, x equals to 32. Okay, so important thing to remember, this is your final answer. Therefore, x equals to 32. Okay, let's have a look at another question, which is similar. So once again, we have our logarithm form and we want to solve this equation. So we have log base x 16 equals to 4 on 3. So first thing we do, that's right, we change it into the index form. And how we do that is we have a look here. The base is x in that logarithm. So that becomes our base in the index form. Log equals to 4 on 3. So we're straight away we should go, all right, we know that's going to be the index. And then finally, we just move 16 over here. And a really good point to note with all these questions is that we always want to make x on this side over here. And it's just easier to solve. So before, where we had x over here, we wanted x on this side. Whereas now, x is a base, we still want it on that side. It just makes it easier to solve. All right, so we're having a look at this question here x to the power of 4 on 3 equals to 16. And you're thinking to yourself, how am I going to solve this? I don't know x to the power of 4 on 3, how that's going to equal to 16. So what we want to do is move the index from 4 on 3 over here to the 16. How we're going to do that is we want to multiply this side so it equals to 1. So we multiply it by 3 on 4 so it equals to 1. And if we multiply one side by 3 on 4, we all know now that we have to multiply the other side by 3 on 4 as well. Okay, so that means that since that becomes 1, you just have x to the power of 1 equals to 16 on 3 on 4. Once again, that's still a little bit hard for us to just work out in our head. But we think to ourselves, 16, that's 2 to the power of 4. So if we write it as 2 to the power of 4, you can see that then we can multiply the index here. So 4 multiplied by 3 on 4, you know the 4 and the 4 there just cancel out. So finally, we just have 2 to the power of 3, which we should know straight away, equals to 8. So quite a complicated question actually becomes quite simple to solve. So finally, we should get x equals to 8. So the important thing to remember once again is to solve this logarithm equation, we want to first change it into the index form. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, so here we want to solve another question, which is x equals to log base 2, 16. How we do that, once again, is we want to change it into the index form. So we go from the log form into the index form. That should always be your first step whenever you do these questions. So once again, we look and we see, okay, base of log, that's going to be the base of our index. The log equals to x. We know that's going to be our index. And then we move the 16 over here. So we have 2 to the power of x equals to 16. Looking at that straight away, we may not be able to work out what it equals to. So what we need to do is we need to make the base of both sides of the equation equal to each other. And what I mean by that is we want to make both of them base 2. And why we want to do that is if the bases are the same, it means that the index on either side must also be the same. Okay? So what we've done from here to here is we've gone 16 is also the same as 2 to the power of 4. So we've written 16 as 2 to the power of 4. And once the base is the same, we can go, okay, well, the index has to be the same. So therefore, x must equal to 4. Okay? So the important thing here to note is that to work this out, we must first make the bases the same. Once the base is the same, we can say the index equals each other. All right, let's look at a question of this now. So question 5, we want to solve x equals to log base 5, 125. So first thing we do always is we change from the log form into the index form. Okay, so we have a look, we go 
the base of the log becomes the base of the index. Log equals to x, so that x becomes our index. And finally, 125 moves over here. And now what do we do? That's right, we've got to make sure the bases on either side are the same. So we think 125, that's going to be, right, 5 to the power of 3. So now that you know that the bases are the same, we can say that x equals to 3 because the index must also be the same as well. So therefore, your answer should be x equals to 3. So remember, first of all, log to index form. Then secondly, change the bases so they're the same. And then lastly, we can answer that the indexes equal to each other, that x equals to 3 in this case. Okay, let's have a look at one more question. So in question six, we want to solve log base x 25 equals to 2. Okay, so we know now the first thing we have to do, exactly. We must change from the log form to the index form. Okay, so we have the base here, which is x. And then we have log equals to 2, so we know 2 must be the index. And finally, move 25 over here. Okay. And we all know from this step what we do is we know that x squared equals to 25 means that x equals to plus and minus 5 because you square root both sides. Okay. But important thing here, remember what I start, said at the very start of the lesson, that x in your logarithm form must always be bigger than 0. So this is a really common mistake that students make where you get to this step and you go, okay, well, that's obviously the answer. But no, it's not because x must be greater than zero in log base x 25. So therefore, your answer should just be x equals to positive five. So that's a really important note to make when you're solving these equations, that x can never be a negative answer in your logarithm equations. Mm -hmm.